At What Culture, we believe in catering to your desires. We cannot control what those desires are, and honestly, you scare us, but we cannot ignore the figures. People like it when people get hurt. Like, they really, really like it when people get hurt. You want blood, and you are my strange children, but as ACDC once said, if you want blood, we got it. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are the 10 bloodiest matches in WWE history. Number 10, Bret Hart versus Steve Austin. We start with a match that many people might not consider to be a groove fest, but it makes the list because the blood spilled in this match helped build one of the most popular superstars of all time. The early to mid-90s were a land of blue crash mats, cheesy nonsense, and relatively low blood loss, but the road to the Attitude Era began in a no-DQ sub mission match between the Hitman and the Rattlesnake at WrestleMania 13. During the match, Austin was severely busted open with blood masking his face and patching the ring. The shot of Austin screaming in pain, thick blood dripping down his face, is one of the most iconic in WWE history, and Stone Cold's refusal to give up despite lying in a pool of his own blood created a modern-day megastar. What a bloodbath, said JR, and he was right the spilled claret pushing this great match into being a classic. Number 9, Triple H versus HBK. Triple H and Shawn Michaels have never been afraid to bleed for their art, and in those terms, this last man standing match from the Royal Rumble 2004 was very artistic. The blood started flowing in a big way after HBK accidentally put himself through the announce table, and before too long his face was glazed with a thick film of blood. Every square inch of his face was bloody. Trips followed suit after kissing a chair, and not to be outdone, the blood was soon dripping into his eyes and smeared on his chest. When the match was over, both men were plastered with blood, the ring was covered in rust-coloured blotches, and neither man could beat the ten count. In the narrative of professional wrestling, blood often equals endurance, and both men endured the living crap out of each other. Number 8, DX versus The McMahons and The Big Show. Say what you want about Vince McMahon. Okay, he's a patron saint of muscle-bound perverts. But say what you want about Vince McMahon. Okay, he's the love child of a creepy uncle and an oak tree. OK, I'll stop this now. Say what you want about Vince McMahon, but he's never been afraid to bleed for his company. At Unforgiven 2006, during the pretty rubbish McMahon DX feud that saw the birth of the Vince Loves Cock t-shirt and, let us never forget, the goddamn Spirit Squad, DX faced Vince, his demon seed Shane, and the Big Show in a three-on-two Hell in a Cell match. By the end, every single man had been bloodied to buggery. Triple H's head and torso were completely covered, Sean's face was a proverbial crimson mask, the Big Show was cut open, Shane O'Mac was bleeding from the mouth after having his throat crushed. The chairman's face and arm were washed with blood. It was everywhere. The McMahons are a rare and crazy species. Number 7, Shawn Michaels vs Y2J. It's a hat trick for Shawn Michaels. Marvellous effort from the young lad. During this match between Y2J and HBK at the Great American Bash 2008, Shawn bled so much from a blade job over his eye that Vince McMahon banned intentional bleeding from that point on. The match ended with Jericho, knuckles slick and red, repeatedly battering a blood-drenched Michaels on the canvas until the referee stopped it. Needless to say, Vince wasn't pleased and blading was officially gone from WWE. The Great American Bash 2008 marks the very last pay-per-view of the TV14 era. May it rest in all its gruesome pieces. Number 6, Pat Patterson vs Sergeant Slaughter. An old but not forgotten classic, it's proof that WWE has always had litres of blood running through its veins. In the Wrestling Observer 1981 match of the year, a heel Slaughter battled the babyface blonde Pat Patterson in an alley fight at Madison Square Gardens, which means no pinfalls, no submissions, no referee, and anything goes. Both men bludgeoned each other with everything they could find. There were no contrived table spots or kendo sticks conveniently left under the ring. Instead, they cracked each other's skulls with belt buckles, boot heels, and brass knuckles. By the end of the match, Slaughter was a mess. Blood poured from his head and down his chest, thick rivers of the stuff. Considering this match took place in an era where kayfabe hadn't yet been destroyed and most people thought the bloodletting was real, this had to be considered carnage. Number 5, Vince McMahon vs Hulk Hogan. Oh, hello Vince, nice to see you again. At WrestleMania 19, Vince McMahon battled Hulk Hogan, who's Hulk Hogan, in a street fight. We all know by now that Vince McMahon is not afraid to expend each and every one of his fluids for the business, but it's still quite shocking to see the Hulkster turn his blonde hair red. By the end of the match, after the two old men had leathered each other with lead pipes like two whiskey-soaked gamblers in an alley, they were covered in blood. On the blood measuring Muta scale, perhaps the amount of person juice lost in this match wasn't quite as much as, say, Triple H versus Michaels, but let's not forget that both of these men were in their 50s, which is just mental. 
Number four, Triple H versus Ric Flair. Continuing the theme of old men nearly bleeding to death, Ric Flair, everybody. Ric Flair bleeds like it's his job, like his life depends on looking like his life is in danger. You only have to sneeze on Ric Flair before he's on the map furiously blading himself. At Taboo Tuesday 2005, he faced the game in a steel cage match and in the words of a wise man, oh my goodness. Needless to say, it took Flair exactly 3 minutes and 20 seconds to be busted wide open. The match would continue for another 20 minutes. Sure, Triple H bled too, he bled enough to put a docker off his lunch, but Flair was something else. His entire head was covered in blood, his shock of blonde hair went a dark, wet red. He looked like a Mark Quinn sculpture. Art jokes! We got him! He looks like a tomato with an old man's body attached, and it got not nice to watch after a bit. Number 3. Brock Lesnar vs The Undertaker We are deep in haemoglobin territory now, everything from this point is a bit horrible. The Undertaker doesn't have the same reputation as being a heavy blader like your Michaels, Triple H's or Flair's, but he sure as hell knows how to bleed big or go home. In a Hell in a Cell match between Lesnar and Taker in 2002 at No Mercy, Lesnar may have been the first to be busted open, but as the old saying goes, he who bleeds last scares the hell out of everybody by nearly dying. After a shot from the steel steps, Taker bladed so deep that blood literally spurted from a hole in the man's head. For the next 10 minutes, the Undertaker staggered, blood dribbling onto the mat like a man trying to blink his way out of a red fog. The canvas was filthy with the stuff and even Paul Heyman ended up covered in blood and he was outside of the cell. Number 2. John Cena vs JBL For many, John Cena is the wholesome chuckling face of the PG era. He is everything that's good, pure, American and fruity pebbles. But the leader of the C-Nation has shed more than his fair share of the red stuff for the company. In an I Quit match with JBL after a vicious chair shot to the head, Cena soon looked like he'd been bobbing for tomatoes in a tub full of jam. Blood gushed from his head, plastering his face, chest and his arms. As the two men battled amongst equipment in the entranceway, JBL followed suit and that suit was a three-piece suit and it was made of blood. By the end of the match, both men were glistening red spectres. Hustle, loyalty and oh Jesus Christ, call a doctor. Number one. Eddie Guerrero vs JBL. This match was so bloody that the pay-per-view had to be rated TVMA. That is saying something. Eddie Guerrero was, like John Cena, at Judgment Day, wrestling JBL and once again bladed after suffering a chair shot to the head. However, Guerrero executed possibly one of the worst blade jobs in WWE history. He cut so deep he nicked an artery and within seconds blood was visibly pumping out of his head, all over his face, all over his chest, all over the ring, which looked like a Jackson Pollock painting in an abattoir. Art jokes! We got him! Guerrero lost so much blood that he went into shock backstage after the match was over, and you just had to see the canvas to understand why this was the bloodiest WWE match of all time. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you can even follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and I'll see you soon.